Hello Bama fans. This was a shock even for Bama fans. No one expected this, but Bama is reportedly interested in a former five-star quarterback commit from Georgia. Did you see this? Before the news, subscribe to the channel to continue receiving the latest Bama news. There's a big name with an already impressive recruiting history on Bama's radar. The news that Jared Curtis, the former five-star quarterback from Georgia, has reopened his recruiting process sent shockwaves throughout the college football world. When a player of Curtis' caliber decides to reconsider his commitment, it naturally generates a lot of interest around potential new picks. And among the teams positioning themselves to lure him, Alabama appears to be one of the top contenders. For Crimson Tide fans, this is news that brings hope and optimism. Curtis is not only a talented quarterback, he is the number one quarterback in the country and ranked number six overall in the nation according to the prestigious 247 Sports Composite Rankings. The prospect of him donning an Alabama uniform has all eyes on head coach Kalen DeBoer and his recruiting staff. They have proven their ability to attract and develop elite talent, and adding Curtis could be the next big move to ensure Alabama's dynasty in college football continues. The fact that Curtis is considered Tennessee's best player also adds an interesting layer to this story. Nashville Christian School, where he currently plays, has been a fertile ground for developing young talent, but seeing a player with that much potential leave a powerhouse like Georgia is something that rarely happens. Curtis' initial commitment to the Bulldogs in March 2024 seems solid, but his decision to reopen the recruiting process shows that the college football landscape is ever-changing and the Crimson Tide is always strategically positioning itself to take advantage of those opportunities. While other top schools like Ohio State and South Carolina are also in the running, Alabama's history of developing elite quarterbacks into top-tier Heisman and NFL candidates puts the program in a unique position. The Crimson Tide's combination of tradition, recent success, and ability to prepare players for the next level will always be a draw for young prospects like Curtis. Additionally, Alabama's training infrastructure, resources at its disposal, and the support of its passionate fan base are all factors that weigh heavily on any high-profile recruit's decision. How this plays out will be closely monitored in the coming months. If Kalen DeBoer can secure Curtis' commitment, it will not only cement the Crimson Tide's reputation as a recruiting machine, but it will also send a clear message to the rest of the country, Alabama remains a dominant force in college football, and we're going to recruit this guy? At the end of the video, I want to see your comment. Man! Ryan Williams is blowing everyone away, have you been following along? Ryan Williams' recent inclusion on the Maxwell Award watch list only reinforces Bama's tradition of winning talent. After a stellar start to his college career, the true freshman Williams has quickly established himself as the Crimson Tide's top offensive threat at wide receiver, showing that Alabama's future is in good hands. Being named to the Maxwell Award watch list alongside teammate Jalen Milrow is a testament to the immediate impact Williams has had on the team and the college football landscape in 2024. Williams, just a few weeks into his debut, has already put up some impressive numbers. His 23 receptions for 576 yards and 6 touchdowns not only rank him atop the SEC, but also rank him among the best in college football. Averaging an impressive 25.0 yards per reception, he leads the class nationally, displaying an explosive ability that turns every touch of the ball into a threat for a big gain. Entering Week 8, Williams ranks second in receiving yards in the SEC, a remarkable feat for any player, let alone a freshman. Alabama's tradition of producing Maxwell Award winners also adds a historical weight to this nomination. The award, given to the best overall player in college football, has gone to Tuscaloosa five times, including such illustrious names as A.J. McCarron, Derek Henry, Tua Tagovailoa, Devonta Smith, and Bryce Young. This elite list puts Ryan Williams on the same level as these Crimson Tide legends, and the Maxwell nomination demonstrates that he is being recognized as one of the best players in the country, even so early in his career. For head coach Kalen DeBoer, who already had the honor of seeing one of his former players, Michael Penix Jr., win the award in 2023, 
Williams' recognition is a clear indication that the work he and his coaching staff are doing in Tuscaloosa is on the right track. Under his leadership, Alabama is not only continuing its tradition of excellence, but is also developing the next generation of stars. The presence of Williams and Milrow on the Maxwell Award watch list shows that the Crimson Tide continues to attract and develop elite players capable of competing for college football's biggest awards. As the season progresses, Williams' impact will certainly continue to be a major storyline to watch. He has already demonstrated that he can be the key to Alabama's aspirations this season, and his growth alongside Milrow gives the Crimson Tide a potent combination of talent on offense. Will this team make a difference this year? That was weird. Let's go! Leonard Fournette's recent revelation about his recruiting visit to Alabama certainly generated some buzz in the college football world, especially among Crimson Tide fans. Fournette, one of the most coveted players in the 2014 class, mentioned that his experience during his visit to Alabama was lackluster, which certainly raised eyebrows. However, this statement brings up the long-standing rivalry between Alabama and LSU and reinforces what many Thai fans already know, regardless of where the big names choose to play, Alabama always prevails on the field. Fournette's record against Alabama is proof of that. While he had a career at LSU, being an All-American and amassing 3,820 yards and 40 touchdowns in three seasons, his performances against the Crimson Tide were well below par. In three games against Alabama, Fournette managed just 143 yards on 57 carries, which works out to a modest average of 2.51 yards per attempt. These numbers contrast sharply with his dominant performances against other opponents, showing that Alabama has always been a tough nut to crack. Crimson Tide fans who watched those games will remember all too well the close matchups, but always ending with Alabama coming out on top. The Tide's victories over LSU during Fournette's career were not only memorable, but also instrumental in securing major titles for the program. In each of those seasons, Alabama won the SEC title, most notably the national championship in 2015, at the height of the Nick Saban era. While Fournette was an undeniable talent, Alabama's dominance on the field was what prevailed, reminding everyone that no matter the recruiting decisions, the Crimson Tide always finds a way to come out on top. It's interesting to note that Fournette, in his interview on the big podcast with Shaq, mentioned personal and family factors when explaining his decision to stay home and play for LSU. He noted that at the time, he had a daughter and his priority was to help his family in the long run, which is why he chose LSU, his home. While that choice made sense to him, the narrative surrounding Alabama and LSU is always one of rivalry, and any comment about a program's strengths or weaknesses naturally generates arguments. But was he the one who missed out on a title by not being at Bama? For Alabama fans, what really matters is what happens on the field. And in that context, Fournette never got past the Crimson Tide's ferocious defense. While LSU had its share of great moments, Alabama continued to be the giant that everyone was trying to take down. The stats and history speak for themselves, even with talented players on the other side, the Crimson Tide maintained its dominance, especially when facing Fournette and LSU. Let's move on. Alabama basketball head coach Nate Oates has a clear mission for the 2024-2025 season manage a deeply talented roster and ensure that every player is prepared to sacrifice minutes for collective success. During his appearance at SEC Media Days, Oates emphasized the importance of using his analytical approach, a trait that has been instrumental in Alabama's blue-collar style of play, to define rotations and maximize his team's performance. With enviable depth resulting from a combination of returning players, New high school recruits and key acquisitions through the NCAA transfer portal, Oates finds himself in a position where, theoretically, two or even three players at each position are ready to contribute at a high level. But that raises the question, how do you distribute minutes on a team where everyone has quality and can contribute on the court? For Oates, the answer goes far beyond traditional points and assist statistics. The coach made it clear that his mindset heading into the new season is focused on the efficiency of players on the court. 
It's not just about who scores the most points, but who makes the team play better when they're on the floor. Does our offensive and defensive efficiency improve with you on the floor? Are you a great screener? Do you play hard? Do you go for offensive rebounds? Oates asked as he explained how he and his coaching staff will evaluate each player's impact. That means players don't have to be the best scorers to be a big part of Alabama's system, as long as they contribute in other crucial areas of the game. Of course, some players, like Mark Sears and Grant Nelson, will get minutes. Both played key roles in Alabama's Final Four run last season and are central to a team that was ranked number two in the AP preseason poll. However, the depth of the roster will inevitably force some players to accept less playing time, which could be a challenge. Oates, however, is preparing his players to understand that winning championships requires sacrifice. There are going to have to be some sacrifices made to win championships, Oates said, with a conviction that reflects his experience and long-term vision. He knows that building the depth and keeping the team competitive will require players to accept that, at times, their contributions will be more valuable in fewer minutes. It's an approach that requires maturity from the roster, but Oates has confidence in the character of his players and their ability to understand that individual success is closely tied to collective success. The coach's vision for this season is simple. It's not how many minutes you play, it's what you do with those minutes. It's not how many shots you take, it's what you do with the opportunities you get. And for a team like Alabama, with so much talent at its disposal, that philosophy could be the difference between turning a promising season into a memorable one, with the potential for another deep run in the tournament and, possibly, a national title. What do you think? Let's go!